Welcome to an intro to double integrals in polar coordinates. Sometimes a double integral is much easier to evaluate using polar coordinates. This is especially true if the region of integration can be easily defined using a polar equation. So because we're going to be converting from rectangular to polar coordinates, it is important that we remember the following equations. So you may want to copy these into your notes. If f of x is continuous on a polar region, defined as given here, then we can rewrite a double integral in rectangular form into polar form as we see here. And there's a couple important things to notice here. First, our function f of x, y is going to be converted into a polar equation as we see here. The way we do this is we replace x with r cosine theta and y with r sine theta. And sometimes the function is written like this to represent polar form and sometimes it's just written as f of r theta. And there's one more very important thing to notice. Differential a is replaced with r dr d theta. So there's an extra factor of r in the integrand when we convert from rectangular to polar form. And we'll take a look at why that is in just a minute. But let's take a look at these two graphs below. Notice in rectangular form, we were determining the volume of these boxes where the bases were squares. Well, in polar form, we still want to determine the volume of these boxes, but now the bases aren't quite rectangular, so it's going to take a modification of the formula to determine differential A. Let's take a look at that. So again, in rectangular form, we determined that differential A was equal to dx times dy, because this represented the area of a base, which was a square, or a rectangle. Now if we take a look at the base of one of those boxes in polar form, it's going to look more like this. So delta theta would be the change in the angle, as we see here. This shorter radius would be r1, and the longer radius would be r2. So to determine the length of this piece here and this piece here, we'd actually have to use the arc length formula, which states that arc length s is equal to r times theta. So this length here would be r1 theta, and this would be r2 theta. And the length of this segment here would be delta r, which we can set equal to r2 minus r1. Now, of course, as we let the number of boxes approach infinity, r1 is going to be approximately equal to r2, which we'll let equal r. So from here, we can say that delta a, or the change in the area, would be approximately equal to r times delta theta, again, because these are all approximately equal to each other, times delta r. So now you can see where this extra factor of r comes from. Go back up here and look at differential a. It's equal to r dr d theta. Well, here's the extra factor of r. And then again, as the number of boxes approaches infinity, delta theta is approximately equal to differential theta, and delta r is approximately equal to differential r. So hopefully this rough outline helps you understand why when converting to polar form, we do have this extra factor of r in the integrand. Let's go and take a look at an example. We want to determine the volume of the solid below the surface given by f of x, y, above the x, y plane, over the region bounded by x squared plus y squared equals 1, and x squared plus y squared equals 4. Well, the first thing we should recognize here is that these two are circles, one with radius 1 and another with radius 2, as we see graphed here in red. So our region of integration is the region between these two circles. This is a great example of when it'd be easier to evaluate this using polar coordinates. And here you can see the solid, and I've traced the region of integration in red in the xy plane. So let's see if we can set this up. The first thing we need to do is rewrite the function as a polar equation. Let's first write this as 4 minus the quantity x squared plus y squared. The reason that's helpful is remember that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So we can rewrite this in polar form as 4 minus r squared. Now let's see if we can set up our double integral. Our function is now 4 minus r squared. Remember, now we're going to have an extra factor of r and then dr d theta. Well, remember, r stands for the radius. Well, this circle here would be r equals 1, and this circle here would be r equals 2. So the limits of integration for r would just be from 1 to 2. And then because we want one complete revolution around this circle, 
the limits of integration for theta will be from 0 to 2 pi. Let's go and distribute the r. So a 4r minus r to the third dr d theta. Let's go ahead and finish this on the next slide. So I'll have 4 times r squared over 2 minus r to the 4th over 4. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So we'll have 2 r squared minus 1 fourth r to the 4th. So when r is 2, it looks like we'll have 8 minus, this is going to be 16 divided by 4, that's 4. And then when r is 1, we'll have 2 minus 1 fourth. So we'll have 4 minus 1 and 3 fourths, or 7 fourths. That's going to give us 9 fourths. Now we'll integrate the specs to theta. That's going to be 9 fourths theta. So when theta is 2 pi, we'll have 2 pi, and then minus 0. It's going to give us 9 halves pi. So the volume of the solid over this region in orange would be 9 halves pi. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we want to determine the volume of this function over the region x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4 in the first octant. So we have a circle with radius 2, but we only want it in the first octant, so it's going to be this region here. Now that we have a region of integration, the first thing we should do is convert this to a polar equation. So if we rewrite this as the square root of 9 minus the quantity x squared plus y squared, we can replace x squared plus y squared with r squared. So our double integral, the function is going to be the square root of 9 minus r squared, and then don't forget our extra factor of r, and then dr d theta. So let's determine what r would be. Well, this is a circle with radius 2, so r is going to be from 0 to 2. But now, because we're in the first octant, theta is only going to be from 0 to pi over 2. And now we're ready to go. This is going to require u substitution, though. We would have u equals 9 minus r squared. So du is going to be negative 2r dr. So that tells us that we can replace r dr with negative 1 half du. So we have negative one-half du, and this would just be u to the one-half. So we'll have negative one-half, this would be u to the three-halves divided by three-halves, or times two-thirds, and u is really nine minus r squared. This simplifies here to negative one-third. Let's finish this on the next slide. So when r is equal to two, we're going to have nine minus four, it's going to be five to the three-halves. And then when r is 0, we're going to have 9 to the 3 halves. Let's go ahead and distribute here. Negative 1 third times negative 9 to the 3 halves, that's going to give us a positive 9. Then we'll have minus, and here we'd have 5 square root of 5 all over 3. This is just a constant. So we're going to have 9 minus 5 square root of 5 over 3 theta times pi over 2. Let's go ahead and get a common denominator here. So the denominator would be 6. Then we'd have 27 minus 5 square root 5 times pi. And we'll leave it like that. We'll take a look at some more examples in the next video. Thank you for watching.